Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Mila Mitra, welcoming you to another session of Space Careers and a Day in the Life. So good afternoon, everyone. And um, all of you have been here for the last few sessions. And uh, so today we have Mr. Divyanshu Purtar with us. Let me... Divyanshu, are you, are you here? Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, let's see your video also. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So yeah, welcome Divyanshu. So glad to hear, have you here today. Yeah, thank you, Mila. It's, it's great to be here. And uh, with me is also uh, Arjun Gulia, uh, who is going to be supporting us. Uh, in this session and also he wow. yeah. he's he's going to find the best questions and bring it across to you Divyanshu at the end that's great uh, okay so let me introduce Divyanshu uh, he hails from Ludhiana in Punjab and Divyanshu loves to be left off center so maybe we'll ask you later what you mean by that and uh, space sciences have always fascinated him he graduated from the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology in Kerala. After he graduated, his heart was in expanding the reach of rocketry in India. So he created an ecosystem of model rocketry. And some of you might have seen his model rockets. Uh, we also have some of them and I, you know, they're visible and, and at different locations, at different exhibitions. So uh, they have started the ecosystem of model rocketry and started the company called Rocketeers. I guess the phrase is nuts about rockets. He handles the complete production, manufacturing, and also the sales, marketing, and regulation of Rocketeers. He's also a serial entrepreneur, having also started Pubbed Up, a customer loyalty app. Divyanshu also enjoys live performances and tea. And of course, we are glad to have hosted him at our office. And today, Divyanshu, it's virtual tea. But again, glad to have you here. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mila. So today we have a lot of students and uh, we've had different speakers who've told us their personal life stories. But the students have a lot of questions about what are the kind of careers, what are the kind of places you can go to study, and what you can do once you graduate. So uh, Divyanshu is going to take us on that track today and give us a overall view of uh, what are the kind of careers in these fields. So Divyanshu, uh, please go ahead and tell us something yeah. more about that. So uh, hello, everyone. I'm super excited to be over here. I hope you guys all get to learn something new and uh, get some new information. Uh, I'll uh, try and uh, tell you as much about space careers as possible. Uh, I, I feel that there are lots of different, uh, lots and lots of different things that you can do and you can come at it from various different perspectives. And, and uh, I want to uh, encourage as many kids as possible to get into the space science and, and the space technology sort of field. So, so I'll try and cover uh it in a way that there's something for everyone uh and and uh, everyone who's interested in the different aspects can sort of see what kind of career paths they can choose so uh whenever we start talking about space or, or space technology the first set of uh fields that uh, come come to our mind uh, is uh, the first set of fields that always uh, come to our mind are uh, very, very uh, exciting in terms of pure science. You know, you have a lot of students talking about cosmology, stars, the Big Bang, the origin of the universe, and are there aliens out there? And uh, how many stars are there? How far are they? What are they made of? Can we get there? And so on. So, so these kind of big questions, which are pure science research and, 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 and very, very fascinating and very interesting to a lot of students. These, these, uh, uh, 
such sort of fields are very very academic in nature right now they they don't uh, really translate into a lot of real world impact or real life uh, technology or companies but there are a lot of people who are interested in un uh, answering these big questions and uh, they do a lot of research and they do a lot of interesting studies they build a lot of interesting hardware to uh, study our universe around us and and uh, maybe hardware that can take us to these stars and planets and so on uh, to basically increase our understanding of the universe around us and the origin of life and 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 where uh, it will go from here so uh, anybody who's interested in these kind of questions should sort of look at it uh, look at, look at these sort of career paths so 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 this career path is very academic so you can you can go for a btech right after your school right after so you know uh, by the time you're in 10th everybody will be saying that study hard in 10th to get into pcm in 11th and 12th then study hard in 11th and 12th to get into some good engineering college whether indian or global uh, and then study hard throughout your btech and then get a good mtech or a good ms under a amazing professor somewhere uh again work hard and do a amazing dissertation and then get into a phd and then you can maybe do core research and post doctoral research and 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 so it's it's a very vigorous uh very very academic you know you have lots of writing lots of studying lots of reading and and uh lots of data and uh, so that sort of a field uh, and and this applies to almost all the fields uh, that come under this category whether you are researching Uh, what kind of materials will we make spacecrafts from uh, and this gets really interesting in the sense that you can explore the most cutting edge materials like carbon nanotubes and the coatings that they have and how you can build a spacecraft that can go into the sun but it will not burn and and uh, stuff like that uh, or astronomy uh, where you know you look at the stars and you uh, try and understand uh, what kind of radiation they are emitting what are they made of where are they going how old are they how when will they die how are they born and then uh, then propulsion so we we have a lot of spacecraft propulsion research happening right now and a lot of people get interested in that where we want to explore so so one very interesting project that was actually funded by uh, stephen hawking uh, was was called the starshot project uh, and uh, it it was launched and we believe that over the next 50 to 60 years it will it will be become the fastest spacecraft that we ever we've ever built it will be traveling at the amazing speeds of 1% speed of light and uh, um so 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 these kind of uh, and uh, these kind of interesting research then you have a very new uh, sort of a field called uh, aerospace medicine so it's not new in terms of the uh, fighter pilot and the that aerospace side of it where you know you have uh, basically pilots and 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 uh you know test pilots who are pushing boundaries of human flight and human space flight even astronauts for that matter but now this field is really expanding as we look at more human space flight and and uh, this there is some good interesting research happening in fields like this so uh, anybody who's uh, who gets excited about whenever we talk about stuff like this should look at this rigorous career path and, and these kind of fields um, the colleges if you look at the big global ones obviously nothing uh, starts without naming first the massachusetts institute of technology in the us they are the most premier uh, sort of space research college out there and they they do amazing work uh, it's it's uh, it's the kind of labs and the kind of professors and the kind of exposure that exists in that campus well uh, even though now everything is online but i am sure that they will have they have translated all of that value uh, into an online experience as well um then you have jpl which is jet propulsion laboratory which is again in the us it's in california uh, then you have uh, university of boulder which is again in the boulder us uh, university of boulder has a very good program specifically looking at space crafts and satellites uh, they are one of the only colleges which have uh, launched more than uh, i think they've launched more than 14 satellites which are all completely student built uh, and when they say completely student built they're quite serious about it so i think uh, from a satellite side uh, as a student uh, they, they are definitely one of the best colleges uh, in the world to sort of go to uh, then you have kyushu institute in uh, japan it's it's a difficult place to go to uh, it's it's definitely a lot of culture shock for indians uh, and in, and in a difficult place to live uh, and integrate with uh, 
but kyushu so but if you love the moon uh, the kind of stuff that they they love the moon they're doing all the research uh, on how to go there how to live there what what is it made of where is the water what can we do what are the resources that we can use that can help us here on earth uh, what kind of what kind of art can we create if astronauts filmmakers if they go to the moon what is the kind of movies that they will make uh, uh, or or photographs uh, the, that the the photographers will click um, or even musicians if you take them to a trip of trip trip to the moon and bring them back what kind of music will they create so 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 they they're even looking at stuff like that so kyushu institute is a fun place to be from uh, that sort of perspective uh, then you have skoltech uh, in the in russia uh, and uh, when it comes to material research uh, they are definitely one of the best places uh, in the world to go to and and uh, they they're doing some very interesting stuff with uh, metal based composites and uh, so on and uh, then i have one uh, name over here of an indian college called iisc which is my college um, and and maybe i'll talk about it in more detail later but on a broad perspective iisc is also a very good opportunity it's one of the only three uh, space universities in uh, a, in the world and and uh, by, when i say space university it's it's a campus that's completely dedicated towards space technology and science all the people out there professors teachers students mtechs phds everyone is just doing space stuff so uh, so it's it's a very different sort of an environment uh, and uh, and and, it, and it's right in the indian space research organization uh, so it shares the campus with liquid propulsion system center uh, in thiruvananthapuram which is a isro center so so you get a very close access of isro you get to uh, learn from isro scientists uh, you get to see isro labs and uh, so it's it's a very high exposure and very very extremely rigorous college and when i say extremely rigorous uh, students have like at at the btech level students have more than uh, more than 9 hours of classes 6 days a week uh, they have more than 3 sets of internal exams every semester and then there's a end semester apart from that there are four lab courses for which there will be practical examinations apart from that there will be at least two mini projects that you have to submit every semester so uh, you you it's it's it you have to really work hard to uh, to to sort of really gather the amount of information that they are giving you and and really process it into knowledge so uh, so it's it's very rigorous and very high exposure in that sense it's an amazing place to be anybody who's uh, so one thing is a given that if you're getting into this field you have to look uh, there is going to be a lot of rigor and you will have to work hard and you should be prepared for that mindset from now itself uh, but it's exciting and it's 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 amazing when your work uh, when your rigor blooms into beautiful stuff like spacecraft that is going to space and working or human space flight or a better understanding of a moon that is rotating around jupiter and uh, you know stuff like that so so it's it's as rewarding as well uh, so so that's what iisc is all about uh, a couple of more institutes in india which sort of start offering this uh, at different levels there is a very good aerospace program at uh, iit bombay there is a amazing aerospace program at iit chennai uh, then you have uh, another very nice aerospace program at punjab engineering college in chandigarh these are the three colleges that i would put like right after iisc apart from that iit kanpur and iit kharagpur as well have uh, good courses which are dedicated to aerospace uh, but at the undergraduate level at the btech level even if you are getting into computer science or you are getting into electronics communication uh, all of these sort of uh, undergraduate courses can drive you to a career in aerospace and space technology and it need not specifically be aerospace that you sort of look at electronics and communication and computer science definitely are two more fields which are very relevant materials is also very relevant uh, engineering physics and physics based sort of uh, you know cosmology and this these sort of courses are also very relevant but uh, a lot of them uh, at at the uh, undergraduate level apart from btech there is a very interesting bs course at indian institute of science uh, they have only 35 seats but uh, from a physics perspective and from a science perspective it's a very good course uh, even if you go ahead for the bsc somewhere else uh, 
at the post graduate level ayuka is offering very interesting uh, astronomy and cosmology courses which and even indian institute of astrophysics is offering them which are available to bsc students so you need not be a btech whereas most of the courses at cv raman institute or iia which are at the masters level for that you have to be a btech at the undergraduate level so btech is always a good choice to go to even though the later masters that you're doing is going to be in pure physics or pure research um and btech is a more of a technology sort of a course by default so so this is a space science and research overview so uh then we get into the private space industry uh, so now ck research is done we know about the universe we looked at the stars but what about building satellites and rockets and taking humans to space and uh, you know building ground stations and giving people dth and understanding our weather and uh, doing disaster management and uh, helping farmers understand uh, when the weather will be bad when will it be good what should they sow what is their soil quality um, and so on and so forth and Uh, these kind of interesting applications so that's where the private industry starts stepping in uh, private industry up till now is in divided into two uh, very clear sort of segments uh, the first one being old space uh, where we have large corporations government contractors people like lnt godrej aerospace data patterns which are and you know aniara which are building sensors and satellites and rockets and rocket parts components sub assemblies for the indian space program like this you will have similar vendors and similar uh, sort of companies which are doing stuff for nasa in the us uh, for esa all across europe uh, and for uh, for for the russian space program in russia and so on so 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 these type of vendors they usually have a lot of heritage they have already built a lot of stuff that is going into space they are usually big companies like walchandra nagar industries or data patterns in india each employs more than 650 700 engineers and uh, and 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 they they have a very big set of work uh, uh, on the flip side they don't own a lot of ip there is not not a lot of uh, technology development that happens in these companies the development actually happens in places like isro and nasa these companies are just sort of contractors who are building that product that nasa or isro comes up with uh so and and the second segment is new space which is mostly startups these are small teams they they're, they're very very iterative technologies they're doing very interesting stuff like you have capella space uh, which is building miniaturized sat they're building satellites that are this big that can see through the clouds so uh, then you have satshow which is uh, helping farmers uh, and banks and insurance agencies make farmers more financially secure uh, or you have uh, uh, velocity uh, or relativity space the rocket is called velocity so they're building this small rocket uh, it can take satellites which are 50 kg and less to 300 km uh, the rocket is this tall and it goes to space and uh, so uh, uh, you have uh, so these are just some few examples space x is per se an old it, it's a, it's a company that's a mixture of old space and new space so they have a lot of old space qualities as well where they are a contractor to nasa where they are uh, you know uh, like contracting with nasa in a similar space and a similar way than say a ula uh, which is like you know uh, uh, so so it makes them sort of old space but they are doing a lot of new space stuff as well they are doing a lot of technology development they are doing starlink which is very very interesting uh, so so this is the sort of difference between uh, new space and uh, old space one thing that i would like to tell indian students is that uh, i usa definitely is the biggest ecosystem for private space industry uh, in the world and uh, as an indian uh, if you go over there it is not very easy to get a job or a get a role in one of these private companies in the us because of their national security laws so you really have to stay there for a period of more than 7 to 10 years Uh, become a naturalized citizen and only then do you start really getting the opportunities that uh, would be open to a us citizen from the start uh, so 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 that's a, it's it's a more difficult time to sort of really get into those roles so most of the people who are in the space industry over here when they go to the us they end up in some other industry they end up in some other engineering industry they don't usually do space stuff because uh, getting into space stuff is a is a, is a problematic thing uh, due to their national security laws same thing happens to us citizens when they come to india 
so uh, this this is something that 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 exists across countries in different ways so uh, if you're really looking to work towards cutting edge space technology you're mostly going to be working in your own country or you will have to stay in another country for 10 years and only then will you get opportunities to be able to do that uh, now putting all of this aside uh, what is this industry like what kind of companies what do they do so this industry is in three segments first one is upstream the upstream industry builds the rockets builds the satellites and and all the companies that builds parts of rockets and parts of satellites so uh, just to name a few you have spacex you have ula ula is a joint venture between lockheed martin and boeing you have ariane spas uh, which is headed by airbus group and 27 other companies you have alpha design technologies over here which build satellites for isro uh, you have uh, vol chandranagar and data patterns which again build rocket parts for isro uh then you have companies like skyroot and agnikul both of which are new space startups in india trying to build rockets on their own you have uh, bellatrix which is building uh, uh, satellite propulsion systems so 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 many of these companies were actually building the rockets and satellites they are called upstream companies then you have companies which are building ground segment so like tata sky so tata so there is a company that has built the satellite and put it into space Tata Sky builds the dish, gives it to you. You can put the dish on your uh, rooftop and get uh, TV at home. So uh, that's that's a ground station for DTH operations. Like that, there are ground stations for satellite phones, communication, navigation, uh, and so many of these other applications. Uh, downloading data, manipulating satellite, like master control facility of ISRO, which uh, tells satellite where to go, when to go, which orbit to go to, how much to speed up, how much to slow down. and so on uh, so so this type of uh, grounds ground equipment manufacturing thybolt and thycom is uh, two two or two companies which are operating at a large level in india uh, and there are so many other companies and then finally you have the downstream companies so okay there is a satellite in space okay there is a ground station we have put a rocket and uh, we build a rocket and put it put a satellite into space now what so now you get some data from this satellite or you get some communication capacity and then there are companies which will buy that data do some interesting things with it and make it into a product will uh, there will be people who will be providing that communication capacities to users who need it uh, so for example net plus or uh, hathway or uh, you know some of these people they are using capacity that is built up by fiber that is backhauled by satellite communication so when you get a broadband connection you are basically connected to a fiber but in case that fiber is failing that connection is bridged between two ground stations which are connected via fiber and providing satellite capacity so uh, stuff like this there are people doing so these are called downstream companies these companies are the real chunk of people who are working with satellites and rockets and the technologies that they build they are responsible for more than 60% of the things that happen in the uh, private industry so uh, so this is a really really large chunk of the companies the upstream is really small like uh, you can think of it like this rocket launch industry like flying the rocket and building the rocket that is more exciting everybody looks at the launch it is so much fun and it seems like the most important thing but it is not today we have the fashion industry the work of the fashion industry is manufacturing clothes that you wear even whether your clothes is from a brand or not the manufacturer and the supplier and the people who have made the yarn and the fabric and dyed the fabric and stitched the fabric and packed it and given it to you they are all a part of the fashion industry fashion industry is massive you know there are so many manufacturers of yarn so many manufacturers of fabric and then weavers and uh, you know textile industry and so on everything is a part of that but what does everyone get excited about everyone gets excited about fashion shows fashion shows are a small part you know tiny like that launch industry is tiny just 2% of the whole less than 2% of the whole uh, global space industry so uh, the biggest is downstream so which is uh, which is the application of space technology and most of the companies come from there so i've been talking so much about these companies do they really exist and how many are there so this is one small map of the new space industries uh, that 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 are classified in different different segments uh this map is of 2018 uh, I, i and this is just the newer companies 
most of these companies are today uh, worth more than 10 million dollars each uh, and uh, uh, the 2020 map is like at least six times as big i in no way could fit it into a single slide the logos would have gone so small that you could not not have read even a single name uh, so uh, but even over here in this image it's difficult and it this has indian companies too by the way so uh, so this is just a small glimpse of the kind of things that are happening the total industry is valued at 330 billion dollars it's closer to 350 360 now and it's growing fairly fast faster than global growth rates so uh, and it's supposed to get more rapid as more human space flight starts happening so it's an exciting time to be working as a part of this industry which is just to reiterate three segments upstream building the stuff ground segment and then downstream using the stuff and uh, there are two philosophies first philosophy is old like you know old space with the big companies heavy contractors you know building a lot of big stuff no major tech development uh, and and uh, just looking at manufacturing and uh, then new space which is looking at tech development small team user driven products application of tech most of these uh, new space companies are downstream and and uh, they do interesting stuff with satellite data and so on and then we finally get to uh, for the indian students something which is very relevant uh, is isro so uh, isro has two major uh, ways to get into it uh, the first one is iitp which is isro induction and training program so after doing your btech uh, from anywhere in any stream you can give the iitp examination and if you qualify uh, there is a 6 month probation period uh, in which you are applied to a job if you qualify after the pro uh, probation you get a scientist so at the most basic btech level you get scientist b scientist b is the junior most scientist position uh, in isro and and um, uh, more than 300 to 400 openings do turn up every year uh, the exam usually happens three times every year uh, the second way of getting into isro right after undergraduation is iisc so iisc is my college and it's it's a college directly under isro uh, it has three streams first one is uh, aerospace which has about 50 seats second is avionics which is like electronics and communication uh, and it has 65 seats and uh, third one is a integrated uh, btech mtech five years long uh, called physical science very very similar to uh, engineering physics but with more space thrown in and uh, uh, I, I think it has approximately 40 seats and out of these uh, 40 students, they get divided into 10 different, uh, into four different streams of 10, 10 students each. Uh, one stream concentrates on geology, one stream concentrates on uh, astronomy, uh, I think, uh, and one stream uh, concentrates specifically on communication and I think there's one more I uh, forget. The exact, I think it's chemistry. Yeah, chemistry and materials. So, uh, so these are the four streams that they get divided into, and you have to choose which one of these four streams you want uh, three years into the course. I think. Uh, so that's IIT, and uh, the entrance examination for IIT is the same as IITs. Uh, uh, so I think they had uh, their own examination called ISAT up till a while ago, but last year they were taking admissions from IIT Advance. Uh, I am not sure how they are taking admissions this year, uh, but yeah, usually they, they, they it's, it's a very similar system as the IITs, and and uh, these are the three streams that are there on offer, and and they also offer uh, a wide array of M Tech level courses, so you can opt after B Tech, and they also offer a lot of PhDs uh, and projects in collaboration with ISRO and so on. So so there are lots of opportunities that happen over there also. Specifically for school students, they have a program every year called ISC at the rate schools, which is a one month long program open to students happens in September every year. Uh, and it's open to 10th and 11th class students, I think. So yeah, that's about ISC and uh, ISRO. ISRO is, is, uh, uh, is a massive government organization. Uh, there are about uh, 18,000 employees. Uh, by the way, if you get into ISRO uh, right after ISC, instead of scientist B, you get scientist C. So if you are entering from IITP, uh, you uh, have to be a scientist B for approximately one and a half years, and then you may get promoted to scientist C. But if you're joining from ISC, you are directly starting off at the level of scientist C. 
uh, and uh, uh, the major fields that are there in offering are very similar to the private industry and the research side of things that i told you about in my previous slide so uh, one thing is there though that you may not get to choose the kind of job and the kind of field that you want uh, that will probably be assigned to you so so you don't really get uh, the choice that you would want uh, to be able to pursue exactly the kind of field that you want so because of that very strangely a lot of people who are there in isro are not really passionate about space science because even if they were passionate about astronomy they got jobs in materials or if someone was passionate about rockets they are uh, doing admin work so so that sort of thing happens which which happens as a part of getting into a government sector job but at the same time you get a lot of stability you get a lot of respect and then at the same time if you do get lucky and work hard you can try and mold your career where you get jobs and roles which are to your interest and liking so you can always try and tell people around you and your bosses that yeah you want to work in a specific field or you want to work in a specific project and uh, if you work hard you may get opportunities to do that so uh, it's 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 a balance uh, like there's, there are there are some very nice things uh, about it and then there are some negative things about it just like any other job or any other opportunity uh, as i told you about the rest of them uh, so yeah these are the so the, according to me these are the sort of space careers that are there three categories there's research there's private space industry and then there's isro or the government space program or the indian space program um, and uh, this includes a bunch of other labs like scl narl uh, and so on so which are all research labs and and have very similar approaches towards uh, taking up people the name of the exam may be different but uh, the approach is overall very similar the roles are very similar the positions are very similar the salaries are the same and so on so uh, yeah this is the overview of uh, the jobs i will talk a little bit next about what i do so uh, i think mila told you guys about uh, rocketeers and model rockets so rocketeers is the only manufacturer for model and amateur rocketry systems in india we make diy kits so you can buy your own rocket and build it and fly it they start off at 1000 rupees a rocket and you can be use them you can put parachutes in them uh, we now have commercially available up to d class motors uh, both with and without ejection charge uh, and uh, we have some testing systems available like propulsion test stand on which you can test the motor and you can see how high it will go what is what is the thrust that it is giving we also have a lot of variants of launch systems so so we have three different ignition systems one is a very basic one which is uh, using a 9 volt battery which you can go to launch 2 3 4 5 rockets then you have, we have a more heavy one which is using lithium ion batteries so if you want to launch a 100 rockets group of students 40 students uh, in a class all all building their rockets and want to launch a lot of rockets so you can use that uh, and then we one have a heavy duty one uh, uh, which is using a 7.5 ah battery uh, this is a lead acid battery um and uh, uh, this system is capable of launching uh, rockets which are using more than one engine so if you are building a rocket which has two boosters attached to it looks like the gslv uh, then you can launch that using uh, this uh, third variant and we have launch variants according to that we have safety gear available according to that uh, and we have all the parts and the components and everything that you might need based on uh, these requirements and uh, and and being able to do interesting things the rocket that you see in the photograph over here uh, is called bumblebee right now this is not painted uh, you can paint it yellow and black and it's inspired from the transformer bumblebee um, and and uh, so yeah we make it look like that with the paint and uh, so yeah this was a nice photograph this is our office and i i thought that uh, you guys should get to see that this is what i have been doing for the last 4 uh, 5 years Uh, when i started off the total number of rockets being launched in india was less than 500 uh, in 2019 just rocketeers launched approximately 80 70 to 80 thousand rockets and plus the ecosystem is growing as well so uh, yeah we are trying to contribute our in our own way uh, students and uh, teachers and people to get interested into rockets and rocket science and space and space technology and uh, that's i think my that's uh, that's great to hear all this about I mean, you've given us a complete overview so that was really nice and i'm sure the students will 
appreciate learning all these words uh, downstream and upstream uh, so they can figure out which direction they want to go into and divya should tell us a little bit more about how you got into this field i um, mean you mentioned you're from iist and is that uh, how you started and what got you interested in space in the first place so uh, i was uh, interested in space uh, right from the start like as a child uh, and and uh, like uh, just just give me one second i'll show you something okay okay great so he's obviously my question has triggered something that he wants to bring and show us and i hope all the students have enjoyed learning about so many different things and in particular he mentioned indian institute iist and uh, okay. so so this is uh, this is an atlas okay right so, so this is my atlas when i was like 6 7 years old uh right my father got this for me and and uh, so this taught me that we live on a globe and uh, you know there's a space out there and there's moon uh this book is uh, douglas adams hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy right i i read this for the first time when i was 8 uh, and a half 9 years old uh and and so 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 for me space was stuff like this i saw star wars when i was 11 and uh, so 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 I, i think those are some of the best ways to get into it with popular fiction and yeah uh, this, this was more books that really got me into it and i used to get very excited about all of these stories of uh, you know uh, aliens and and uh, people in space and going to different planets and different moons and these different planets had different weather and they're made out of different things their trees are different uh, some of them are just ice and and uh, stuff like that and i used to uh, most of this uh, used to come from there uh when i was 6 uh, years old my uh, dream career was astronaut like uh, this was i i i remember this was i, I was so young at that point of time that most of the students who were like we were being asked in class uh, as to what you want to be and i had said astronaut and most of the students didn't understand what an astronaut is and uh, uh, so that was uh, the, that was the sort of aspiration i had always uh but when i was just 7 7 and a half years old i got glasses uh spectacles and at that time only uh, air, uh, air, only fighter pilots could become astronauts up till that time right uh, so this was early 90s uh, na- late 90s 97 98 so up till that time there was no concept of private human space flight or uh, or you know having uh, like even iss had not really evolved to the level where you started having citizen scientists right uh so 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 it was a very niche small club and as soon as you have something like spectacles it's it's a club that you could not be a part of yeah i mean fitness and, requirements are still yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty high so, i guess even if i got a surgery done and i could get my glasses removed i still would not be eligible to become a part of that thing so so that really triggered in me that how else can i be a part of this world because i can't be an astronaut i can't go to space so uh that's how i started looking at uh, engineering and exploring how to be a rocket scientist and how to build the rockets and and do stuff like that and that's what sort of drove me in that direction and uh, that's what drove me in the direction of choosing engineering first uh and and then obviously there was a phase where uh, i was looking at it more from the perspective of engineering but after i gave my iit je i found out about so up to the time i had given my iit je i did not know about iit uh i found out about iist only after i gave my itje and qualified it so uh once i had qualified my itje and i got my rank they had sent me something like a counseling brochure and in that uh, we had this extra brochure of iist and that's the first time i saw the college and heard about it and it was just too good to be true uh, it was a college uh, that was directly under isro uh, one of the professors was apj abdul kalam uh one of the other professors was nayakir nainan and dr b n suresh and dr radha krishnan and who were these were these were all people who were stalwarts of their field right padma vibhushans and padma bhushans and uh, you know president of india ex fascist president of india and like uh 
and these people were there in campus and there were photographs of uh, students of them uh, like these guys teaching and students uh, with them and, but there was no alumni there was no campus there were no labs uh, there were only 220 30 students up to this point uh, i i talked to these students uh, who were there in college and they said that these people are actually in campus and you actually get to interact with them and you actually get to go to these isro labs and Uh, do your practicals because there are no college labs and you are actually living in the isro guest house because there is no campus or there is no hostel so it's amazing like uh, so so uh, and on the top of all of this it was uh, for free because every student is on a 100% scholarship but you have to sign a bond uh, and the bond is something which is like most of the students look at it as a positive because it's a job in isro so because they've given you a scholarship you have to work for isro for 5 years uh, i think the terms of the bond has changed at our time it was that uh, that if you're studying in the college you have to work for the for for isro for 5 years or you have to pay the bond amount which was basically like saying that i won't take the scholarship but i don't want to work for isro uh, so uh, so 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 that was the format of the college uh, i chose aerospace engineering most obviously because i was interested in building the rocket uh, and uh, even though the world has changed a lot and i hope that i do like there are lots of things that need to align for anybody to go to space but uh, like uh, i am much more hopeful as a 30 year old than i was as a 9 year old <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah that's it's great to hear about your experience at iist you know that yeah that i would be a would be a dream for most of the students here to so interact with these kind of people you know, than what it was at my time now it's a much bigger community right. much more interesting things happen at least four or five different satellite projects happening with four or five different colleges across the world i talked about the satellite program at boulder right mm-hmm. so is i is building a satellite in collaboration with that boulder they're building a payload in collaboration with kyushu institute uh, they are doing some uh, other projects with jpl they have an exchange program that's active with jpl uh, right at the end of your btech uh there are two rocket projects that are happening there are uh, there is a specific student project division for students to be able to do projects inside isro as a part of their btech uh and so, uh, their btech project they can do it in isro for 6 months so, so students uh, can get direct experience while studying yeah, there itself it's definitely an amazing experience in immense amount of opportunities but they make sure that you have to work hard for it right yeah I think all these fields aerospace engineering space physics you have to work hard uh you got to be pretty much at the top of things yes. to be successful definitely so i think we have some questions so uh, arjun would you like to bring us some of the questions yeah yeah we have some questions and it was a very nice talk it some of the students nice, are, yeah. they are able to relate with your early experiences very much and some of them are very inspired by it also so let me just share a few question that the students have been asking uh so yeah so the first question we have from jyotimani venkatesh so he says that uh i want to ask sir how do you think the modern rocketry tell us about that career so uh modern rocketry for me became a career it 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 uh if you're thinking about rockets and space science uh, modern rocketry may be a learning tool for you it's a right. very good project for you to understand how rockets work and do some interesting building activities do some hands on activities build your own rocket fly it put a parachute on it uh, put a camera on it put a pressure sensor temperature sensor on it uh like like we've uh, introduced uh, so uh, not just just yet like but january onwards now in india finally we're also introducing payloads where you can put payloads into the rocket and you can do some interesting experiments so so it really helps you learn how rockets and satellites and spacecraft work and it helps you learn all three aspects it helps you learn the upstream by building the rocket and the payload it helps you understand uh, the you know data gathering and data acquisition and then it helps you understand the the downstream because you can use that data and do some interesting projects with it so uh, so in that sense it's a very good very versatile very vast uh, tool for you to be able to do very interesting things and and that's what most of the students i think would look at it like uh, as uh, if you want to build a career in rocketry uh, i think india has fairly limited opportunities up till now and that is what rocketers is trying to change uh, 
model rocketry became a career for me because while i was in iist i i built my i, I saw this ted talk by uh, steve jarvetson so steve jarvetson is a vc in the us uh, he is one of the first investors in spacex um, he works with peter diamandi and he did this uh, ted talk is 3 minutes long and he talked about model rockets that's the first time i saw what a model rocket is i was in second year at iist at that time and uh, i saw these small rockets and they're, they're tiny and uh, you know and they they were flying and they were looking beautiful and i was like yeah i can build this i'm going to build the pslv and the gslv four years from now i definitely can build this now right so uh, and and that's how me and four others we sort of got onto this journey of uh, building model rockets and it was harrowing even though we were in iist in the mecca of space science uh, education in india uh, with all of these amazing people all of this access to these amazing labs and facilities and what not we couldn't build model rockets there were no parts there were no components there was no fuel there was no ignition system there was no launch system none of these things was available in india none of the sub components were available in india we had no know how no mentorship in this specific direction that's how we ended up starting a couple of projects with our professors uh, and what else we started doing was we started going to a lot of college festivals participating in different different events trying to win, win prize money and gathering this money and then we imported model rockets from the us and these these things were very very expensive because they were coming at us prices and on the top of that we had to pay shipping from the us to india yes. right uh, which which became a harrowing task and on all the top of that we could not uh import fuel but we still had to pay for it because it came as a part of the rocket and the company said, took it out and sent it but they didn't reduce the price mm-hmm. uh, so so, so uh, it, it was ridiculous and uh, then for the fuel we worked in our chemistry lab and and uh, built the, the fuel systems on our own we had approximately 30 tests that failed then a couple of them that were successful then we had about 12 to 15 rockets that failed before we had our first successful launch uh because the us model rockets were pretty much destroyed by that time but we had seen those model rockets we built our own components and parts from scratch we contacted uh manufacturing units that could help us uh, do stuff uh we 3d printed a hd blow die and then uh, blow molded a few nose cones uh we found balsa and cut out our own fins and stuff like that uh, yes i've seen your know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so uh, we 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 found uh, PVC foam sheets, cut out the internal components of the rockets ourselves. Uh, nice. Uh, we we uh, uh, we cut down like we we get got these logs of wood from uh, a, a, a person outside who was using it as firewood, and then we burned these and made that into charcoal and then crushed that charcoal to put it into the fuel. and and uh, that's how we made our fuel <laughs> like for the yeah. first few times so yeah, yeah. Uh, so you worked in like all the possible things as a as a startup we started doing it uh, and it was like so like it took us so much effort so much time so much financial resources to do this by the end of it even though i flew some model rockets but i was very very like i was very happy about the flights and the experience and the learning but i was very very sad and i was sad because i felt that there may be like hundreds of thousands of students who want to do this and they just can't it's so difficult in india and it's like next to impossible and that's how uh, sort of the idea of all rocketeers came into my mind and that was what was the vision that i want to make sure that every indian who wants to do this should be able to do this and uh, for me in that place like iist where i had so much resources available to me without cost a single flight cost me approximately 25000 bucks between the four of us obviously but like still like you know it was ridiculous and uh, uh, now i i can say that i'm like on a good path like i can provide a model rocket to a student in india anywhere just to build and fly properly working reliable safe in just 17 1800 bucks so uh, so so that's what my vision with rocketry beca- became and that's how i built my career with rocketry right uh, and yeah. some other student may yeah. come okay okay to- so that was a very nice answer yeah devanshu okay yeah so we lost you for a minute there 
right one thing that somebody else might think up of something totally different and build a career in rocketry and then there are other examples from india itself i would recommend you to read about them uh, if you're interested in rocketry you should read about sunny kabrawala you should read about pratham amla read about rajesh muneshwar these are all indian people they are all rocketeers uh they they build their careers around rocketry and done things which are different than rocketeers and not same at all okay. hmm. yeah so we have another question so this question is from shubham agrawal he says so can i know the specifically which degrees i have to pursue to become a observational astronomer so, so uh, if you have any at the undergraduate level uh, any btech or a uh, Or BSc even. Or, yeah, or a physics-based uh, course. So whether it's a BSc, whether it's a BS, uh, or or whether it's a four-year integrated uh, out of a course, which is there in some of these colleges. Outside. Like ICER. Like, yeah, like ICER has a five-year one, um, which becomes a master because it's an integrated master. Mm. But like some of the colleges outside of India, they have a four-year BS uh, sort of a course. and and uh, that that so these sort of courses uh, which are uh, when you go into the bsc or the bs side it would be good to concentrate more towards physics and more towards optical physics maybe uh, and uh, but yeah ob- observational astronomy uh, as a field is available for study and research only at the masters level so if you're looking at a core of uh, observational astronomy you will have to do an undergraduate course which is like a btech or a bs and only then you can opt for something like that at the masters level in specific institutes which are offering yes okay so yeah so thank you divyanshu we have another questions from priyanshu bhattacharya he is asking sir how should we start preparing for the journey of big scientists from the school itself any suggestion for program for students still in the school become so, used become used to reading and writing yeah read read 6 hours a day write 6 hours a day like <clears throat> maybe 6 hours is an exaggeration but yeah yeah okay exactly so basically the thing that will guide you through your school days is your interest in this field and if you are looking for some courses stem and space also provides a few i mean all of us <laughs> other stem and space yeah. stem and space even uh, the vanshu and rocketeers and okay. so basically yes. you can get experience in all these kind of astronomy space physics uh, space engineering projects with uh, people like us and uh, that would at least set you on the right path and you know like i mentioned last time we have a, a project that we do about observing asteroids so things like that will keep you uh, will give you at least a feel for what to do and how to analyze data you can build an office yeah that's right that's what <laughs> that's a, that would be a great that would be a great experience yeah, yeah. So, so I have one more question from Divyam Garg. He is asking, sir, for pursuing a career in astrophysics, which should de- degree should I choose? So that's the same answer as the previous one. Yeah. Right. So, all right. So. Uh, Wait, I think we... there was another one that uh, was pertinent to what he can say. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's What's the difference between aeronautical engineering and aerospace engineering? Uh, Anushka. Chandurkar asked this question. So, uh, aeronautical engineering deals primarily with aircraft, and aerospace engineering primarily deals with uh, spacecraft. Okay, so they should go for aerospace if they're yeah. So, interested in this. Uh, aerospace uh, is not just like it's not at the core level a spacecraft engineering because spacecrafts are uh, like if you look at satellites. satellites are the real spacecraft right because they are the things that are out there in space you know doing stuff right. rockets basically take them from here to space right, right? so uh, rockets are like doing what planes do because they have to fly through the atmosphere and then they are doing what satellites do because they have to fly in space as well right uh, and they have to go to this specific place in space so that is why rockets becomes sort of like aerospace engineering uh, aerospace engineers have a fair bit of know how in terms of how structures and manufacturing and radiation hardening and space gradation of satellites might work but satellites at the core is an electronics based product and electronics and communication and electronics engineers contribute much more towards building a satellite than an aerospace engineer right so uh, that but an aerospace engineer is important to be able to convert anything that is 
going to stay here in earth to going in space and being able to survive there so that's where the core of aerospace is extra beyond what an aeronautical engineer would learn about aeronautical engineer would learn about things that fly but they stay here within the atmospheric protective layers of the atmosphere and protective layers of the earth uh, and and uh, it's it's a very very challenging field in itself but the core difference to aerospace is that aerospace allows you to understand and build things which not only fly in this protective layer of earth but they have to go to space as well yeah that's a that's a very good answer and uh, i think that's the last question we could take right arjun time wise yes yes ma'am yeah yeah so again divyanshu that's that's been very enlightening because you really showed us a different approach and uh, many of these fields are interdisciplinary so hopefully the students will understand that they can they can get to it from several different points of yeah. education all of which you mentioned and uh, again we brought this talk especially for students who are going to be participants of national astronomy challenge so all of those uh, who ha who have joined us from that viewpoint uh, please do stay involved with us because we will be uh, organizing different talks like this and uh, again thanks divyanshu thanks arjun and mm -hmm. i think that's it mm -hmm. for today yes yeah bye guys bye everyone bye, okay. bye everyone okay. Thank thanks you. for thanks. joining thanks for the Thanks for the talk, Divyanshu. It was nice having you here. Yeah.